Hello everybody, welcome to episode 51 of the Contest Round podcast, just to clear up something. Uh, we didn't record last week, both very busy, but uh, you know, back to do episode 51. Also, just to let you know, we are available on SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes podcasts. All links are in bios, so make sure to check us out. And including my lovely co-host, which is Dan of front, www.frontlinemcc.home.blog. Make sure to keep updated with all the state of the battle realm and what's going on in the contest. Hey, mate. How you doing? Hey, Rich. We're back. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Uh, you know, UK is talking about some reopening stuff, uh, some positive news here in the in the US. So just, uh, you know, staying busy and uh, and hoping that the good trends uh, continue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've still, I think by the time I've uploaded the podcast, I probably would have had the lockdown haircut. <gasps> oh, wow. That's yeah. big news. Because we don't get barbers open until uh, mid-April. Oh, wow. So, so we're still kind of so, like yeah. waiting on that one. Yeah, I don't think I've, uh, if you've seen any of my, if you saw my last crystal opening, you know that my beard is uh, at an all-time level of greatness. Almost almost an odin level of greatness <laughs> yeah if, if i may segue into today's huge news now we've we've known about this for a while so you've been keeping your excitement under wraps but uh your boy is finally coming to the contest rich yeah it's pretty amazing like i, I don't know what to, what to, what to say except for like so no somebody said oh are you going to uh slayer of gods <laughs> this champion and um i was like more than likely more than more, likely. more than likely yeah yeah like what what do you think about the promo images do you like the look i do very much so i, I was a bit kind of concerned that uh, how they would go with it the most recent iteration that's gone to a marvel game that i've liked has been the version that they did for the nintendo switch game which i forget i think it's marvel alliance or something like that mm-hmm uh, the the version there, which I think it was a 2019 release. I want to say, either way, that release had the um had the kind of look that I was hoping for, and it indeed has that look. But you know, Command was going to smash it out of the park when it comes to design and stuff. So uh, I'm happy with uh, with the way that it's uh, turned out. Yeah, um, he looks he looks pretty cool. We don't have uh, spotlight stuff to share yet. Just sort of. Just the general. We know he's a cosmic, so cosmics mean buffs. Yeah. Um, and uh, then we've got. Um, I know there was a lot of speculation. I think we were all kind of predicting Odin based on that um, that uh, character map that came out um, oh, yeah, a couple puzzle. months ago. Yeah. I mean, it 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 seemed like Odin had to be in the center of that. Who else would have made sense? And then we were all speculating on who was the other question mark. Was it Sif? Mm -hmm. uh, was it uh, Surtur? I think I was I was hoping for Enchantress, uh, but we do have uh, the Mangog uh, coming, and he's he is a tree beast of a villain. Yeah, um, basically like the the combined evil or or malice of a billion beings that uh, Odin wiped out uh, a millennia ago or something like that, uh, and is looking for revenge. So he's going to be um, hopefully a high powered mystic. Yeah. Uh, champion. Um, I think I've read one uh, arc of Thor where Mangog actually teamed up with a clone of Thanos to yeah, I've been reading uh, that take well. on uh, Thor. That was a that's been my one comic um, experience with that character, which was uh, which was pretty uh, pretty good. Um, so yeah, so it's we've got a cosmic and a mystic coming in March, and uh, hopefully they will be better received than uh, February's champion. Yeah, the ones that are kind of like they they could be gone with a with a puff of a breeze of the wind, and you probably wouldn't even uh, even miss. Yeah, yeah I think I I forget who tagged me on Twitter, but someone was like, "What's with the the lack of uh, hype in in February?" And and I don't know that it was necessarily like a bad month for the game. I I felt like I got a lot done, and there was stuff to do. It just there was no hype around the champion, certainly, and uh, the side quests were just very simple, right? Like mm. log in, clear the lanes. <laughs> like there, you know, there was no arcade token to redeem. 
yeah <laughs> for a, a, a coupon for we got a little bit of that coming though yeah uh, but i don't know have you read um you read the bifrost gauntlet posting it it looks like it's some sort of like a scaling dungeon kind of thing yeah which which could be cool but there's feathers there's gauntlets there's an armory there's a casket of ancient winters mm. there's there's valhalla victory solo events uh yeah. uh there, there seems to be um a lot of moving parts to this <laughs> Yeah. Let, let, hopefully the confusion is just in the terms, but there there seems to be a lot going on with this event. It's the complexity again. We kind of got. I, I feel that we're mm -hmm. not as complex as uh, January's with the, you know, know, yeah. the tokens, and, Wh which and was an all-time high. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, this doesn't have like the three quests to choose from, which mess, messed everybody up. This is just one yeah. quest. Thank God. I think it's understanding what you're capable of, which is the other thing. But as well, when you if you're right. if you're uncollected and above, you go in at tier five, and then you kind of go upwards from there. Which is just like, okay, I'm I'm sort of with you, Kabam, on this one. You, but you're gonna have to kind of like, I, I and as I said in my video today, it's better if we do content once it's released to then go look. This is how it works. But as you right. say, it's like it does feel like it's a it's a dungeon type situation. It's an incursions type situation, uh, to a to a point where you go in and go as far as you can in order to get the best you can. The only dip, and it's kind of like the same thing with uh, with the dark artifact store where you're buying stuff. So it has yeah. its comparisons, uh, but there's a lot more of a level of complexity and understanding. Like if you're getting theoretically thirty feathers of any given month. Then when you come in and you go, right, well, I can grind for, I have to do X amount of quest tier uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Because theoretically, once you've reached 10, you can't re-repeat 10 because you would need the, the Uru in order to open caskets. But if you've run out of Uru because you've just gone, okay, day 1, quest tier 5, day 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That gives you that 6 rooms, that 6 feathers. Yeah. So it, it won't work out like that. There'll be some other elements to it, which, as I said, it's better that we see the quest launched in game to then go, ah, so that's yeah, how it works. I, I would I would just say with these complicated side quests and, and this one, this one doesn't look like it's going to be uh, like a once a day kind of thing. Like you'll get a feather a day, but you don't have to run it once a day. You could probably yeah. save up the feathers. It might be good just to wait 24 hours for people to test it and the videos to come out so that you don't make a mistake by rushing. Yeah. Because we, we've seen that a lot, right, with some of these quests where it either launches a little early and it's buggy or there's an unintended consequence that hasn't been explained yet. Uh, so you don't need to be first, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, and, and this looks like, based on the, the dates, that we have a five-week uh, event quest so you should get 35 of these feathers yeah uh but i'm sure uh i, I know i'm gonna be working on a post and i'm sure rich will be uh putting together uh, probably multiple side quest videos <laughs> oh yeah i'm, I'm on on this one i'll probably go for maybe three this month maybe three for yeah, side quests but, specifically <laughs> but it looks it looks pretty good there's some there's some T5 CC frags in there. Looks like some Sig stones, some ISO. You, mm. you know the kind of the uh, the usual stuff that you would expect. Um, there's some some six star hero crystal shards in there. Looks like you can earn a five star awakening gem. Yeah. Uh, some gold. So yeah, there's there's the usual uh, bits of goodness that we like to see, mm -hmm. uh, which which is which is good. Yeah. Um, and and the other piece of content, and I think this is going to be uh, probably one of the more talked about things of the month, is the return of the International Women's Day Boss Rush. And, yeah. and it seems like boss rushes are always uh, popular and um, generate a lot of content. So that's that's going to be fun. The um, Once again, uh, International Women's Day Boss Rush, uh, designed by members of the community, features uh six female uh champions as defenders sorcerer supreme black widow um the og black widow uh jubilee tigra storm pyramid x and elsa bloodstone who are you worried about rich 
I'm just trying to think of it. it no, I, mm, I don't think anyone I'm really worried about. I'm just worried. I probably, if if any of the people that have created have done it with specific nodes in mind, yeah, then, which they probably have. Yeah, then then everyone, every single one. But uh, <laughs> if it's a case that they've kind of like, if it's more like of a fairer thing, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. But it's a boss rush, so it depends on the rewards. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get too uh, hyped for about. Because like last time, didn't we have um, ten thousand five star shards? If if I remember rightly. Yeah, that sounds right. So. That sounds right. Would I be super hyped for something like that? That's probably not. So should the difficulty be scaled similar? Don't know. Is this a case of multiple difficulties? Again, I don't know. There's there's still questions, and there was things that I think I hope from last year's one. Which I can't remember if that was a la- no, it wasn't. That wasn't the last time we had a boss rush, but it's just something that I don't know whether or not Kavam decided to shift the current meta. But did they up, right. did they up it to six star shards last time there was a boss rush? I can't remember. Oh, I'm trying to remember. That's asking I'm trying a question. to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah, I'd like to see a little more difficulty or maybe two difficulty levels because I think in the past they sort of scaled it towards uh, you know four star five fifties. And I, you know, I would want people with that level of roster height to be able to do it. But I think add another one for people who have five stars, you know, five sixty fives as well, uh, for a little more of a challenge and, and more awards. The the one that worries me is Tigra, yeah. uh, just oh, because that's a good point, yeah. Because unblockable specials, and she just takes up so much room with those specials that if you have to bait a couple. And she's not throwing it. I just I get backed in the corner every time. <laughs> you know she she kicks my butt sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. Um, we don't know who um, designed the fights, as far as I know. I'm guessing Dragon. Yeah, is Jubilee. I mean, it kind of seems kind of obvious. Um, you know, hopefully Cat and Katie and some other members of the community uh, have been able to uh, contribute. Maybe Star. Uh, mm-hmm. But I I don't I don't know I don't know exactly like who's associated with who like I think last time was obvious like Katie did uh, Emma Frost uh, and you know Katie's famous for for liking Emma Frost and I think Star maybe had clairvoyant who, who's a character she's associated with but I don't know this time so much yeah um, that's a good point isn't it it's it's always fun. Uh, it's always fun hearing about you know, people that have designed the fights and what they, uh, what they envision for maybe say the solution and the counters. And mm. then you see some video of, of some obscure champion that has the perfect utility that no one was thinking about. Yeah. I know. So I always, I was... you're right. I thought you, you just lagged out. There. Oh no, I'm here. Okay, good. I, I, I wouldn't, I was like thinking, why haven't they asked M to do it? Like M could, uh, could do a boss, boss, boss rush, um, who do you think she would pick? Uh, she'd probably pick Corvus, but it's got to be female, hasn't it? So yeah. she she wouldn't she wouldn't choose she wouldn't choose Corvus. She'd probably go for a female, which would be Medusa. Oh, good defensive um, champ. And probably then figure out a way to kind of like deal deal with that, uh, or kind of put put that in. I, I don't know what she'd do. I, I but you know she has been asked, so there's there's kind of like yeah, uh, there's 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 no point. Um, uh, okay, well, you know, with um, the the side quest stuff, also comes uh, buffs. And, yes. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened with with this because I was I, I kept checking. You know, you know, after ever since the the kind of me uploading something before I was meant to situation. Yes. Right. I've yep. been checking these dates all the time, but then I checked yesterday, probably early on yesterday, and I didn't see mm. that there was an embar there was a an embargo lift for Friday twenty sixth for all the other buffs. Did you? When yeah. You, did I you I think it happened late late in the in the evening my time. Right. Uh. So you would have been asleep. Like yeah. I think a lot of time a lot of times that they they might make an update at say like. 5 or 6 p.m. PST local for Kabam, which is, you know, 8, 9 o'clock my time, but it's middle of the night for you, mm. uh, which I, I think is, I, I think it's it's tough for the European creators 
uh, the time difference um, mm. <laughs> between when, when you're in the office and working and when the Kabam people are in the office and working. Because I think that's when it when it updated. Because we knew about Angela. Um, and Masakre is the other uh, value-only update. And then the Hood and Civil Warrior are receiving the, the larger updates. Mm. Uh, do you have a champion in particular that you're excited about from that bunch? Well... Um, I am in possession of a rank two massacre. Oh, so that that is meaningful to you. Yeah, I'm also in possession of all the others in five star. So uh, definitely interested in the uh, massacre one. Yeah, yeah. I have a six star, and I have a six star civil. Uh, somebody watching those pretty closely. Um, mm. Civil Warriors always had a pretty good hit uh, kit. It's just the uh, the damage has been so bad <laughs> that uh, he he can't really help you. The hood seems to be the one generating a lot of discussion and angst uh, because he has been pretty significantly changed, and there's actually a uh, a nerf thread. Yeah, I've just uh, seen that. That's already going on the forums because uh, what's happening is, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously trying to make him better for all, but they're taking away the fate seal on uh, his SP2. And I don't play a lot of Hood, but I, I know some people do like the character and actually use him. And the fate seal on the SP2 nullifies all buffs, mm. uh, which is a great piece of utility, right? Yeah. Uh, it's what you would look for from a mystic, uh, and that's that's going away uh, with the with the buff. So he may be better overall. And if you've never played Hood before, you wouldn't know what you're missing. But I think for people that uh, have been playing the Hood, uh, the main use for the Hood just went away. And that's that's the issue, isn't it? Of going like, um, it's like saying, okay, your 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 toy, which was a um, was a toy airplane, has now been changed to a toy car. Um, but you like running around with it, you know, in like holding up into the into the sky, not not yeah. having something down on the ground that's kind of like still able to move, but it's kind of been run along the ground. Uh, and that's a problem, isn't it? Because it's options for players. Players want options to take on different scenarios. This is yep. an option for a scenario. Unfortunately, that scenario now has to be changed. So, Right. Um, and, and what if the hood was your only counter for that scenario? <laughs> oh, for sure, yeah. And it went away, right? Like that That's a problem because we all build our rosters based on, on kit utility, right? Like this champion solves problem ABC champion two solves problem X, Y, Z. And that's, mm -hmm. that's mainly how we choose our, our rank ups, right? It's like, yeah. all right, I, I need someone to deal uh, with this, this problem. Um, and, and, and it comes down to a, a philosophical choice. Cause clearly what they're saying is it's okay to take something away. If, um, if the champion is overall going to be more useful, uh, I I don't know that the player base agrees with that. Mm. <laughs> I think it's going to be a big uh, topic of discussion. But uh, I am going to look at at playing the hood uh, a bit once this buff goes live, uh, because he's such an important synergy champion. Yeah. Uh, not just for Ghost. I know Ghost gets all the headlines, uh, but I just rank to my Kingpin, and uh, the hood gives Kingpin plus one hundred percent rage. Purify ability accuracy, which is a big deal if you're playing Kingpin. Um, so uh, the hood is someone that that I may end up using uh, a bit because uh, I am getting into more uh, more Kingpin gameplay. Uh, so definitely, I'm going to uh, be monitoring that situation pretty mm. closely. Yeah. The massacre situation, I, I didn't really kind of like have enough time to clock in the massacre stuff. Uh, so I'm going to like throw it up. Anybody watching on, on YouTube, I just want to quick, quick check of some stuff. Uh, I need to really find out like um, what in specifically. I'm just trying to look for kind of just some quick specifics on it. I also need to find out like what's changed from point A to point B 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I should really look at the version that I've got and then compare it off. I don't know if I really have the time to do it in in the in the podcast right now. Yeah. Um, should we should really kind of continue on and talk about stuff? Just quickly de- yeah. derailing a little bit. Um, <laughs> how's your grind been in 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 game? Because like I know we're both doing or like at the point of the video releasing now for me, my seven point one exploration has now been wrapped up. I know you were doing the same. Where where are you up to now? How are things going? I am I'm 100 percent through uh, 7.1.3. Nice. I have I have not made too much project uh, um, progress in in Quest Four the last couple weeks because I got a little behind with Cavalier. Um, I still have to finish that up as of recording this. I still have the last three quests to do. Mm-hmm. For the four star challenge, yeah, as well as um, basically the whole quest to do from that last, uh, you know, j- quest six. Uh, so I'm done on collected, but I haven't finished cav. I have to do that, and I still have to un- uh, 100% legendary for the um, Deadpool. Love uh, battle, yeah. yeah, love is a battle four. So um, I basically I haven't gotten any of the T5 CC from the monthly event quest yet. <laughs> which uh, mm. I can't I can't let that opportunity expire. So uh, probably won't be getting into any 714 this weekend, at least until uh, I finish up Cav and um, uh, Love is a Battle Realm. Uh, and again, it's, it's relying on specific champs. Mm. Uh, you know, Human Torch, such an important champ for, for both those pieces of content. Um, but I need him for AQ. I need him for AW, yeah. right? Or, or he's going to, you know... I, I could not take him and have him available, but that's going to cost me potions. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't really uh, leave him on the sidelines when you see a mojo on your path, <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> you know, or a doom. Yeah, so. exactly. And a same, same thing will be with this um, boss rush. If there's a lot of mystic females, then mystic yeah. females and human torch go very well together yeah well we've got we definitely got that tigra uh let's see it looks like oh we've and we've got sorcerer supreme so two mystics two skills two mutants actually mm. i think All as right. well a lot of them are going to be quite spongy so i think i'm going to be already thinking about archangel human torch uh maybe an apocalypse oh yeah I, oh lots, apocalypse lots. yeah and I might even bring out my new toy. So by by the time this video is released, it will be um, a case that in my six star Nexus, which after my six star featured midweek, which had a decent six star basic, not a, not a brilliant six star featured opening, I picked up uh, Captain Marvel in my six star me- Nexus. I oh, was, what a home run that is! Yeah, I was thinking. I love her so much. To the right, I, I have mine at rank three. She's great. That's gonna. That, that's this is probably gonna be my next rank three. However, though, uh, I am actually thinking about holding off on this for another month, just in case I pick up the six star version of Odin. Oh yeah, because no. If, if you if you spend that cosmic T five CC, you will pull Odin guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, it's just how it goes. <laughs> it's just how it goes. Um, yeah. So that's that's the plan with that. Funnily enough, the champion that was in the middle was a hood and whilst i was actually recording i had to check on the buff information to be like oh hang on i've got to make a decision am i going to be doing mm-hmm. anything this check checked and i was like nah i'm not going to be doing that let's, let's no i don't Captain think Marvel. i don't think he's going to be that good no i i did the uh the six star nexus as well and i pulled silver surfer no that's not too bad i suppose not, you're going to do it for bad. um just just building a prestige build down the line if you that, that if i could dupe him absolutely I have to mm. take them up um for prestige yep yeah I, 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 there's some champions i've been i worked into for the uh what was i doing for seven seven point one i've had some kind of like decent champions that i've taken up in order to take take on that particular content uh black widow deadly origin spider ham and who else have i recently taken up to rank five long shot Ooh, very nice. Oh, and Falcon. Falcon's an- another one. Uh, All right, so you're you're on board with the Falcon buff too. Yeah, it's it's a case. I like the I like that champ. I like the champion. I had the six star version. And I was kind of like, oh, what do I do this? So I decided the five star version, right up to rank five, is probably the the best, and then kind of like integrate it into what I'm doing. 
Uh, especially kind of like what we've got Red Wing, lock on, last two seconds longer. This is at 95. Provides an additional uh, critical rating of 1, 2, 3, 2. So it's a big old booster whilst in um, whilst in lock, lock on. And the extent of like how much damage you can ramp up and stuff like that. It's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he just he's solving a lot of problems, man. It, yeah, especially Good like the way he kind of takes on some of the defensive uh, abilities of some player, uh, some some uh, champions. I'm like, man, he's yeah, just like, like thing, yeah. thing, yeah, absolutely. Oh god. Um, right. What else have we got? We got to talk about. I I think I think that's the big takeaways from uh, MCO uh, MCOC. Should we move over to the uh, the MCU? We and should do, catch yeah. Catch up with what's been happening on the uh, on the Disney Plus. Uh, we didn't get to talk uh, last week, so we're going to talk about uh, episodes uh, six and seven. So that would be the uh, all new Halloween Spooktacular mm-hmm. and uh, Breaking the Fourth Wall. Um, I have to say, the Halloween episode, episode six, uh, has been my favorite episode so far i loved every part of this episode uh, it was a fantastic use of the the halloween framing to see everybody in yeah. um their their comic uh costumes mm-hmm. uh, it just just fantastic um but you know i mean there, there's so many different places to go with this um i i think my big takeaway from this one was the back and forth between quicksilver and and Wanda and yeah. just trying to figure out like Evan Peters, who are you playing? Is it is it really Quicksilver? Why do you know so much? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like you definitely know too much, dude. Yeah. Um, and you're and you're poking the bear, um, for sure. Of course, you know, she hexed him through a bale <laughs> of hay. <laughs> that was at funny. the end of the, which was which was amazing. Um but it it's been interesting because He's really the first person that like Wanda's had to sort of verbally spar with mm. that you know it wasn't just like oh you shouldn't be here I'm removing you or <laughs> or I'm resetting everything uh like there's actually like a back and forth uh there that was it was just super super interesting to watch um and then of course you know vision he knows something's up he tries to get out of the hex mm-hmm. Uh, there's a you know crazy scene where he's he's broken out, but he's getting sucked back in and getting pulled apart. And um, yeah. oh my goodness, it! I mean, what that was a that was a roller coaster of an uh, of an episode. I don't know. Was there was there anything about that episode that I didn't just touch on in that that ramble that was was big for you? No, I mean there was the the little kind of like. I, I don't know what it is. Just like these little kind of not jibes, but the the, the little mentions about um, kick ass. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun, right? I, I you know, I, I, it's just like, again, just like like what the heck is that? I think I I did a message you or something. There was something like a, a the gif of kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio when he's pointing at the screen. Yes. When it's like it says like oh that'd be kick ass. Like ah, that's the thing. Um, and it's kind of cool because like they were both. But Evan Peters and Aaron Taylor Johnson were both in Kick Ass, and they both play Quicksilver. Uh, it's just kind of like it's a cool nod. Uh, the kids are kind of like um, using and understanding their powers just a little bit more, not a huge yeah. amount. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's there's something there's something really really off. Is this the episode when um, Agatha Harkness is in the um, is sitting down in the car? Yeah, and she's waiting for yes. a cue. This is yeah. one where yes, where Vision finds her in the car, and, yep. and she go, he goes, um, uh, um, I oh, sorry, I just said I, I said I got, I got the heartness, didn't I? Yeah, but that's yeah, fine. That's fine. Everyone, that's I mean, episode seven, isn't it? Yeah, we learned yeah, that sorry. in episode seven. So but, yeah, I mean, Agatha, that's who it is. Agatha nope. Hartness, uh, Agnes is there, and kind of like goes, uh, oh, you're a, you're you're eventually here to save us. Um, no, what's an Avenger? Are you, de- are you dead? No, but you are, and it's like what? What? What, what do you mean? I'm dead. You're dead. Right. They. I mean, you can see like visions having this sort of slow rolling uh, crisis that that very much extends into um, into episode seven, right? Mm. Uh, like he he knows something's off. He's he's freaking out because everyone seems to know more uh, 
uh, than him. Uh, and you, you know, episode seven is a bit of a a bit of a kind of a reset, right? Like, yeah. it's like okay, last couple episodes have been insane. Like, you know, Wanda's powers are starting to glitch. She knows something's up. Clearly, uh, expanding the hex uh, to yeah. save Vision um, probably pushed her a little bit too far. Uh, mm -hmm. And and you know, now Darcy's in uh, the hex. Vision wakes up. Darcy so I mean it's just cool to see those two together and her sort of feeding him the um the information <laughs> um but I mean episode seven it's all about it's all about the Agatha Hark uh Harkness uh, reveal it was Agatha all along as we predicted it she was Agatha mm. uh what we didn't know was uh she's been causing problems since episode one yeah that's the thing is exploring what's the agenda there's a lot of stuff in this episode now yeah. not, we're not going to get into episode eight until next week at yeah episode eight next week uh, right but um it's just a case of like just this is all unraveling and it's really exciting because when it's unraveling you're like it's now a rush to get everything sorted there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff happening at one given time the yeah. um the kids are with agatha agatha harkness which isn't a good thing the um nope. uh sword are trying to get in um, yep. both types of sword. The uh, yeah. Monica Rambeau is trying to get in, and yep. also good sword and bad sword. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With sword and bad yep. sword. Yeah, uh, this is the episode that has right the uh, has a has an end credits and uh, end credits a mid credits scene. Um, yeah, oh, so for the much. first time. Yeah. Super super ominous because we're like, where is Evan Peters this whole time? Exactly, uh, and then he shows up at the at the very end. Uh, so yeah, I just so many questions about this. Um, mm. uh, you know, Agatha, Agatha's interesting because she doesn't strike me as like the final boss. Like no. what, what is her motivation? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it's fine that we don't know that at, at the end of episode seven, I'm not criticizing that, but it's like, I want to be like, Agatha, who put you up to this? Who are you working for? for and what's why your, what what why are you doing this yeah what's your agenda um, yeah what's your agenda because um you know agatha in the, in the comics very experienced mystic survived mm. the salem witch trials i i think clearly um you know she has the experience on on wanda um mm. but i do have my doubts as to whether she has the power to stop uh, Wanda and a a newly powered up Monica Rambeau and the twins. Yeah, uh, that those are some heavy hitters right there. Um, yeah. So she better she better hope she's got some uh, firepower on her side because I would not want to mess with that that group. Yeah, I guess it goes down to and just there's there was something that was in the trailers which uh, I can I guess I mean it doesn't really matter it's not really a spoiler it's kind of because uh, it looks like it's going to be in episode nine. It's when they go like, "This is our home." Well, then let's fight for it. That's right. not touched on to date, so that's probably going to be on the last episode. So that still kind of like pinpoints at the end has something. I know. It's it's crazy, it. crazy. We've only got two episodes left of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, what what a roller coaster. I mean, we'll have to see how it ends, but uh, you know, so far. Uh, seems like the the disney plus series are uh are a success yeah and uh you know can't wait we've got uh you know we've got a confirmed launch for uh falcon and winter soldier in mm. march and then in may uh loki so uh, the hits are just gonna keep uh keep on coming it's gonna be it's gonna be quite good uh still holding out hope mephisto shows up uh yeah. but we will uh we will see. Yeah, I think um, I said as well. Just, just quickly, the the yeah, yeah, about yeah. the fly. They keep on this. Yes, the fly. There's something that's kind of important about that and 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 stuff. But anyway, yeah, we should we should move on to. Uh, it's a good time now to switch over to talk a little bit about Marvel Realm. Yes. So we did get the big uh, version uh, 2.0 update. Uh, World quests are here. How are you feeling about all that? Uh, I'm really enjoying the really enjoying the game. Actually, I'm enjoying it a little bit more. 
than I did in the last couple of weeks. I was a bit, I was oh, a bit good. concerned about it. I was I was a bit unsure, uh, but I'm playing uh, a lot more. I, I yeah, I I think matchmaking is still something that needs to be addressed. It's something that can be of to your benefit or to your detriment, depending on who you, who you face off against. Like. The power rating of gear is something that's very important, but also synergization of gear still is something very important and the damage output um, and the capabilities you have. So, uh, for an example, if you have a a gear rating of anything between 1,200 to 1,300, you will probably find yourself being at the the pinnacle of your uh, damage output and your synergization. But if you are somebody that has a few champions that I have, that can be that can be anything between nine hundred to one thousand and thirty, you will find that more than likely, unless some good, you you have like a good bit of luck, you will not be able to outweigh the damage that's coming into you. So that's something with the matchmaking is kind of like getting an understanding of going. No, it's not just about your battle rating; it's all about the gear strength you have and whether or not you can have a fair matchup. Which is mm. the uh, thing at the moment? Have you managed to get in some some games, Dan? Yeah, I I've been able to do a little bit. Uh, mostly trying to do the um, the world quests. Now, there's two nice. difficulties: normal and and heroic. And heroic is not a walk in the park. No, it's not. <laughs> you know, I think I've been desensitized to the word um, based on MCOC, but it 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 is it is quite difficult. Yeah. Um, if you don't have the specific champions really geared up. So I was able to get through normal uh, really quickly, get those objectives, which was great. Um, but I haven't really been able to loop back to um, heroic in the last couple of days. Uh, it's kind of been a blur of a week trying to get everything done uh, with uh, sort of life and, and, and stuff in MCOC that I haven't had as yeah. much time as I usually do for uh, realm uh, but I am, I'm working on that, um, that, um, uh, mm. iron legionnaire push right now. Nice. He's, he's the champion that I am working on. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing some bits on him as well. I've, um, I've just got him to 1,250 on my battle rating. Just picked up some gear on him as well. And I need to rework it. The, the problem that I'm having now is. I'm just not damaging from where I are, with, where, where I'm at, where I'm at with battle rating, and the only, re- yep. only way I can possibly change that is to kind of like really ramp up the gear. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to open up some crates, which is, and, and this is the thing with the strategy side of things. Like when you get into the game, you'll have elements of um, summoner advancement, which is called gear advancement, right? And that really will require you to think strategically. Um, and for us, like, because I've just joined uh, a, a new alliance, uh, the structure and setup is that we'd we um, back to the old days of summon advancement. If any of you listening could remember this, and Dan, you probably know this. Save one oh, week, yes. spend the next. Mm-hmm. Which is right. where we're at. Yeah, so you're like saving your your gear ups and your scrapping for when they're going to earn points. Because um, mm-hmm. there there's some pretty good milestones in there. Um, you know, even even that first one that's usually ISO. Well, that you need that. <laughs> yeah. That's helpful. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 one of the other issues that I've got is is the, how the gear acquisition works because, like, I've just picked up. And is this is the annoying side of things? It's like sometimes when you pick up new gear, it will have new stats for new weapons, which is kind of a bummer if you then have got like stuff for old gear. I like so you've got the um, I'll give you this so this example here. I recently picked up a new rare chess piece which has better stats than an old chess piece on my Iron Legion. It I've got currently health and health. It's not really the best stats coming from a rare piece of gear. Yeah, no, not not getting you excited. No, no, <laughs> and that's the same synergy of uh, flashy entrance, which is uh, something that I like. It's uh, on air reactor flight ends. You your next special heavy attack gains one hundred and six power which is actually quite quite nice of a build up 
So this new piece of gear I got, a new rare piece of gear, I was like, great, I've picked up something new that has different stats. I look at the stats, and then for the brand new weapon, the, um, uh, is it the Proton? The, the, yeah, so the Proton, yeah, Proton cannon, cannon. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I haven't trained with the Proton Cannon yet. So I guess I, I've got like the, the options of going, let's switch between having that for, for that weapon and that for the other weapon. But it doesn't solve the problem of some of the weak gear that I have and the changes I need to make there, hence. So it's just, ah, uh, just life in it. These things happen. Mm -hmm. These things happen. <laughs> That's, you know, you got to say your prayers to Aryan Jesus and yeah. uh, hope, hope that he comes through for you. <laughs> Absolutely. That's 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 life playing kabam games. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from that, I'm having a I'm having a blast. I did the world quests and it's just it's just nice I, to be. I like the cutscenes. I like the cutscenes. It it looks good. Um, I wish that I wish that it felt like a little more of like you were acquiring what you're going after, where it, it feels like you're more defending it. Yeah. Um, like it 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 is kind of the same thing as as um on we've on seen before no, it's stronghold yeah, yeah stronghold isn't yeah it? yeah it, it's kind of similar to that uh you know i'd like to see something where maybe there there's more of a a moving through a map with the team hmm. um to like you know get a checkpoint or or something like that just um so that you're not always on the defense like some like i don't know i just the story's really cool and i kind of want to feel like i'm playing the story a little bit more yeah. rather than just a cutscene simply framing my next fight uh, if that makes sense but you know maybe they'll get there uh, then there's the other case that I, just quickly uh you know marvel future revolution is is starting to push their promos oh, God. Uh, that I'm storm so how good did that storm look We'd have to. We're gonna have to make a decision whether or not we change the podcast to cover like. I know. Everything. I know. I I saw that and I was like, Marvel Fru Future Revolution. You are making a case. Yeah, <laughs> this... like that art is is pretty cool, and you know a lot of the the criticisms we've had of Realm, um, sound like of what Marvel Future Revolution is trying to be. Yeah, I'm gonna be straight on it. Like it's yeah. After after playing like World, I've, I don't know. Have you played World of Warcraft, Dan? Are you? Uh, I was I was always too worried uh, to start because it seemed like the thing I would get hopelessly addicted to. Yeah, I did it for <laughs> how many years did I do it? I've done it for several since since release. I played it. Uh, I must have must have been. I did two to three years solid. I did yeah. three of the expansions, and then um, I got myself involved with something um, with uh, with gold. The buying and selling of gold. I got involved with that. Uh, first yep. time I've ever ever kind of like, well, yeah, cheat, cheated, murked. I don't know. Um, got, bought. I bought gold and didn't go and grind it and sell it on. Um, but uh, yeah, they they then banned my account. So I went, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll never do that again. Um, mm. Bit of a bit of a wake up with that. So I, I, and I decided never to return. Uh, but I am looking forward to Marvel Future Revolutions because of the World of Warcraft type elements meet marvel and if they do it well and they do it right and some of the stuff that we as you even pointed out to like if they had this stuff in realm it would have been like like wow okay this is cool this is different and then you know promote it off the back of that if you want an, an open world rpg but it's not an open world this is kind of like a well i don't know because it's like it's it's like a mobber meets mm. mmo sort of rpg it's kind of like it's yeah it's, it's like it's got everything but it's like well what is but it but it's yeah, got no just... open exploration no, it's not open world the open world yeah. is not in there right it doesn't it doesn't have levels but it's also not open world it just mm. it kind of has defensive maps yeah uh at this point so uh and, and it it all seems to be like a very slight riff on on what we've all already seen mm. uh so far um i don't know it's it's such a the, the these multiplayer games where you're really relying on teammates are just so tricky because it's yeah it's it's so easy to get frustrated right like the, the, you know you're learning the game and you're, you're trying to get good matchups you don't always get good matchups sometimes you get a bot 
But sometimes you just get a teammate and you're just like, what are you doing? Why are you playing Sorcerer Supreme like a Hulk? <laughs> You know, yeah. Like I think we've, I think we've all had that where, like, you you get like a random matchup, and you're like, oh, okay. Like, uh, yeah, I've been playing like a lot of Iron Man or or Black Panther or Hulk recently, trying to get those champions up, and you get like a, a Storm or a Sword Supreme. You're like, okay, as long as they stay behind me, we should be good. And they yeah. don't. <laughs> it's like you had one job. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I I'm I'm surprised uh, it's, actually. I've, it's tough. I, I broke out my Sorcerer Supreme uh, today for the first time since the changes. She's still fine-ish. I just, I'm not seeing the numbers that I used to, but um, she's still effective enough. Like, she's still effective enough. Still, still effective enough. Yeah. Still effective enough. Man, we might have to, like, change the podcast to, like, call it uh, the Contest Realm Revolution. Or the, no, the uh, Contest Revolution Realm. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be <laughs> lots of lots to talk about. But I I am looking forward to um, checking out Future Revolution uh, when it does drop. And, and right now we just know sometime in the back half of the year. Mm. But that's still a six month window. And as we know, these things are subject to change. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think as well they may have like looked at the COVID situation. They may even looked at like Realms launch and look like look at what say they missed the mark on because that's the other thing like. There's going to be right. elements of things that people might go, right, well, Realm didn't do this right, but they did this yeah. right. So Because yeah. it, it's still net marble. They're all still net marble games, right? Yeah, all under the same umbrella. Yeah. Right. So they probably don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to hurt each other. No, uh, exactly. Even though it's different game teams. Yeah, that's true. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, I think that's covered a lot of the stuff. Um, for this week dan what are you up to next week uh i i think my big uh task as always on an update week is to uh try to explain the side quest <laughs> mm. so that uh people don't get confused and um you know hopefully just uh help sniff out a few bugs keep everyone up to date because uh, uh it's always a roller coaster of emotion when we download that patch and and find out what is or is not working so mm-hmm. fingers crossed on the uh, on the quality control on this one because it feels like it's been rough the last few. Yeah, uh, that's exactly my hopes as well. Uh, it it just it needs needs to be better. It needs to be every everything really because like consistency, uh, everything right through the dropped inputs, functionality, everything needs to be on point, and we don't need anything kind of like crashing and breaking on us. So that's gonna have to be a thing especially with all these kind of stuff going on next week for me i'm gonna be doing as saying with dan side quest stuff and as well uh lots of guide stuff that i'm still yet to kind of like get done 7.100 100 exploration which um i'm probably gonna ask some people to come uh contribute some stuff towards that in info wise um apart from that that's really it and that has been the podcast thanks very much for listening we'll see you for episode 52 next week have a good one goodbye